Hey there, this is Kristen Haynes with thewaywardhome.com, and I spend half the year in my camper van and half on my sailboat, and I hope to help you live your nomadic dreams too. So today we're talking about everyone's favorite topic, which is how to go to the bathroom in a camper van. I'm literally asked this all the time, and we're also going to talk about some other things about van life, of course, with um, Eric and Colby with Engineers Who Van Life, and I'm really excited you two are here in the podcast, so thank you so much. Yeah, we're excited to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So I just want to jump in a little bit about like just your intro into van life and um, what got you started with this in the first place? Well, it was Colby's idea and she pitched it to me really early on when we started dating and I'm like, no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But like, ironically, like shortly after that, I ran into two different people. One, I got a running partner uh, in Portland where we lived at the time and Two, we got an intern at the job, my engineering job, uh, who both lived in their van and they adventured and they were normal, stable people. And I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't a, you know, too crazy of idea. It's something that like normal people can do. So I brought it back up to Colby and was like, Hey, you know, you know how you brought up the van life thing. And she's like, yes, <laughs> I already bought one. <laughs> and, and that was kind of the start of it. You know, that that's how we both got on board with, with the idea. Cool. And yeah. Colby, how did you first learn about van life? So it was your idea initially, like how did, what sparked your interest in it? Yeah. I don't think we share much about this ever on our Instagram, but when I graduated college, um, I took off to New Zealand and just traveled in a camper van. Um, it was just like this weird calling that I got and I booked the flight and like, there was no looking back. And if I hadn't signed an offer with a company in the U S I don't think I would have come back. Um, but that was, 2018 and then it was just kind of always in my mind um I just never really saw it as feasible until you know the pandemic and everything became remote and I could still keep my job and that's when I started talking to him about it um and it became a reality so I just I loved every part of it I hope to go back there someday soon too Oh, that's so cool. I've heard great things about van life in New Zealand. And yeah, that could be a whole other topic that is very exciting. <laughs> so, Oh my gosh. Cool. Yeah. If we go back, we'll, we'll do a podcast for you. We're looking at November ish, maybe. So, oh my gosh. Well, how, know. how cool. So that sparked your interest. And then you guys did your first van build after that. Yeah, yeah it was uh summer of 2021. I think we got the first chassis, built it out, finished one took like six months. We were both still working full time. So pretty much just building on the weekends. Uh, everything is a learning curve uh, with your first fan build. So be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we spent six months building it and then moved in in the winter. Uh, so solar was a problem. Mm -hmm. we stayed in, inside because uh, we were cold. Our heater broke. We we had toilet issues because we like <laughs> DIY our own toilet because that was our whole thing. We were going to like DIY everything um we'll get into that uh later i'm sure but uh when did we buy the second fan we ordered the second van almost as soon as we ordered the first van and it was just a little too small so it it took what eight months for the second one to arrive so the whole time in the first one we knew we were gonna build a second one it just like happened to be in like pretty quick su su success <laughs> succession succession yeah. so um we did that one, but that one we did a little bit differently. Um, yeah, that one, I left my uh, full-time job to build full-time, uh, dedicate more time to uh, content creation and resource building. Uh, so that one we finished in three and a half months. And I mean, the build quality going from build one to build two was night and day. <laughs> so it took half the time and it was probably twice as good. Yeah. Wow. And the, your second van, you, both your vans were Ford Transits, right? Yep. Correct. Yeah. And then, the first one was a 148 uh, regular length and the second one is the extended. So you went for a bigger van for the, for the second, longer van for the second one, which is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Oh my gosh. Like it's, I think it's 20 inches. Is it 20 or 22, 22 but it feels like feet. Cause you get, well, you do get the cubic feet from it, but it is a world of a different Cool. That's good to know for people that are looking at yeah. vans, like how much big a deal that is. So that's awesome to know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, cool. So you did mention the fact that you self you built your own uh, bathroom or toilet in the first one. I'm so curious about that. What did you guys do? We got like a three gallon bucket. So it's the same diameter as a five gallon bucket, but just shorter. So you can like comfortably sit on it. And then we grabbed some like half inch Baltic birch plywood and basically just built a box, a box around it. Um, put a lid on it with like an actual toilet seat. An actual toilet seat. And we yeah. were going to uh, get like a urine diverter um, in there so we can have a liquids container. Oh, no. But, we, like we, that we... never really got built that's not true we did we put so we bought on etsy this like diy kit for a hundred bucks it sounded like great idea compared to like a nature's head because hundred versus a thousand and we ended up just taking one piece of that the urine diverter Mm -hmm. and like taping that in there and then we just never could get it to compost right so then we started doing like the bags you know like just bag it call it a day and I think in eight months we used it twice because it was so, so painful. It was like emergency only. Yeah. Like you literally can't go like, don't have five seconds to dig a hole, like <laughs> kind of thing. And I was still peeing in the bottle. You were still using the shiwi. Oh yeah. We didn't uh, because use the, it. the urine diverter, we had the diverter, but it diverted into like a, we didn't leave enough room for like a decent size it was uh, urine container. So it was what like a one liter bottle or it, something it was, like it was really tiny. dangerous it was just like <laughs> stuck in the corner of the box and so yeah so if anyone does diy it and you're a female highly recommend the she we you probably heard of this like <laughs> we pretty much <laughs> would use the diy situation for emergency number twos and then number one we would save our oat milk not the cardboard ones the um the the California farm the, the plastic, the plastic yeah. ones and we would use a she I would use a shiwi and then we would just fill that up and I just remembered we even literally got rid of that toilet like oh yeah two or three months in we did uh, to living in the van it was just so bulky and such a pain to like take out every time it was half inch birch plywood so it probably weighed like thirty five it was pounds. heavy and we had to like Empty. pull it out of it wasn't on a drawer slide so we had to like pull it out of a cabinet. Oh. Um, so we literally left it on the side of the road and bought like a, <laughs> a collapsible, I forget what it was called. Oh, Trova trip. Oh, Trova trip. That, no, that's a different, it thing. was a collapsible bucket. You could put a bag into, um, oh. and, it was actually a lot better, we but will... it was like 12 inches tall. So it was like barely taller than like just squatting. <laughs> We're actually, we'll send you that link. Cause that was actually, if you are not going full composting toilet, I would actually buy this again. It like popped up, put a bag in it, popped out. Like it was. It was space efficient. It, it took up the size great. of like, what, like maybe two Frisbees stacked yeah. together. Yeah. It was wow. cool. That's amazing. And all my toilet research for vans, I've never seen the collapsible bucket. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll send it. I think it's somewhere on our blog still. I see some people get it on Amazon sometimes. <laughs> yeah so you guys have been through like the toilet ringer and so I'm curious like what kind of bag when you started going to the bag method like how does somebody (sighs) even choose the right bag to use because there's so many yeah so I went down the rabbit hole on this and I actually ordered um they actually have I googled like toilet bag and like they actually have um elephant something makes them I'll find the exact name and you can put it somewhere but they're like for composting but toilet matter Mm. um however if we were to run out of them because they were pretty expensive um I just double bagged with um small trash bags which are hard to find because apparently you can only get the tall ones but if you can get the small ones I just we double bagged it and like it was immediate like we didn't let them sit around it's like go and then go find yourself a trash can (laughs) I have kind of a funny little um, side note to that is my dad has a minivan and he camps with us sometimes and he has a folding toilet that he attaches a bag to. So he went in the bag oh. and put it in his cargo <gasps> hold, you know, that goes on the top of the minivan and he yeah. forgot it in there for about three days. And oh. <laughs> he's oh. probably going to kill me for telling that story, but he was like, I'll never do that again. <laughs> oh, did it leak or did it just smell? It did not leak. And he used okay. like, the smell's got to permeate through the plastic. I mean, plastic. Yeah. 
<laughs> plastic is not airtight. Yeah. So a reminder to everyone, throw it out or smell tight. right away. Yeah. <laughs> throw it out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I feel like too, if you can avoid also going number one, because we've learned that the liquid is the reason things smell a lot, like outhouses and things, you're, you shouldn't really go to pee in them. You should just do number two. So there's a good tip. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing because people have no idea and then they create this like weird concoction that gets very yep. smelly and they don't know how yep. to deal with it and stuff. Yep, so, yep, yep. Yeah, that's a great tip. Keep <laughs> yeah, it we, separate. <laughs> we've, definitely, we've definitely tried the bag method with the uh, just using a garbage can, like this tiny garbage can. Yep. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we've tried that so cool so that's how you guys started with your first van you totally took the toilet out and yeah so I'm, I, another thing that van lifers aren't aware of is the pee bottle thing you guys mentioned that very yeah. briefly but every van lifer has a, a pee bottle you know people don't yep. realize that I think so yeah and you know. like no need to because I remember when we were building I was like researching like pee jug pee jug and they're super overpriced like just get whatever you buy get your groceries and I bet you something will work as your pee like replace it every couple of weeks like we would not keep it for a while but no need to like get some pee jug thing like just use whatever totally <laughs> <Lemonade laughs> containers yep. yeah yeah the more opaque the better probably <laughs> yes definitely <laughs> Which I liked your <laughs> almond milk idea. That was very interesting. I have we've used a huge cat litter container with a wide mouth. Oh. And that, that worked really well. Ooh, it's opaque and white on That's the outside. Perfect. You can carry yep. it around, has a handle, nobody knows. So, yeah, just go into the bathroom. <laughs> exactly. So have you guys tried the portable toilet thing, the chemical toilet thing at all? Have you seen those? No, we have seen them. We haven't personally tried it or even met anybody with it. We just really have the compost toilet experience. Yeah. What made you guys, like, you tried to do a DIY one in your first van, but what? why did you want one in the first place? Like, what about a composting toilet was appealing to you guys? Well, we wanted the ability to, like, be comfortable in our van. Yeah. Like, you can't go to the bathroom. It really limits where you can go. Like, you always have to be at or near a restroom. Um, and ninety percent of the time, you're like close to a restroom, anyways, because you get, mm -hmm. you get gas, you go grocery shopping, you you know fill up on water, or go to go to a park. Mm -hmm. um, but it's that ten percent of the time that like makes it all worth it. It does, and that's like a good principle for a lot of things in the van. Is like if you use it once a month, it was worth it. Like we were also kind of thinking forward to right now. We're in in Colorado um skiing all winter and you can't really dig a hole like in the snow it's a little more obvious mm -hmm. um and not right and a lot of places close like the grocery store or the gas station are closed so we were kind of thinking forward like we actually might need somewhere to go more um this winter and we actually have used it a lot more this winter because of that yeah so tell me about the toilet you chose for this van your second van yeah, so it is um the compo closet cutty and it actually came on the market like right as I was picking one out. And to our knowledge, I've seen a couple since, but it was the first one to like actually take into account van life um, and the considerations you need like dimension wise and like, can you get to the agitator? Um, whereas a lot of the composting toilets before that were really, really good, but they were made for tiny homes, um, you know, things that aren't moving all the time or like you had more space so I saw like the agitator handle was on the front the box dimensions allowed us to like have our seat that it sit in sits in be a normal height um and it's very simple like it's like all you do is have the number one container which is black not not clear which some other ones are and then the solids that you just you know um pick up and and dig a big hole and and cover it um it was just simple and and great and it's a little bit cheaper than some of the other ones out there yeah for sure and it's so small yeah I mentioned to you guys before I've been testing one as well mine sadly oh, cool. came with a, a crack in the body of it and they're Ooh. going to replace it of course but oh, no. I noticed I think it was slightly smellier than it should be because it wasn't an enclosed oh. unit so I'm, I'm going to give it another try because everyone I've spoken to like you guys yeah. say that 
It works fantastic. Like, tell us a little bit about how your experience. It was the cutty that you had mm-hmm. that was cracked. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. But- mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a bummer. Cause so we even cut a corner and did not install the fan just cause it sits in our shower and we didn't want to deal with a, a cord going into our shower. So we, and even without the fan, like people wouldn't even know we have a, a, a toilet in there. I think at the beginning, the liquids were smelling, but I realized that's because I wasn't closing the lid <laughs> and that was like user error. Um, but I don't know. How do you think it is? It's really contained in the box because yeah. the cutty itself has like two layers of of lids. And then in our shower, oh. we have like another, I mean, paper stone lid provides a, you know, solid surface for the bench. And then I guess a, a cushion on top of that. But yeah, so Pretty even nice. like we fully contain the contained toilet. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you can follow. Yeah, totally. That makes a big difference. Cause you know, I did test it because it did, did have the cracks in it. Um, so yeah. I, I had it in a, my old van while we were building out the new one. And so I put it in the old one, I sat it there. And when we left, I actually, I emptied it, but I didn't like clean out the bin. And I was like, I'm going to leave mm-hmm. this in this van for yeah. a week and see if it stinks. <clears throat> and it didn't, it didn't stink, you know, cause I had it all shut up. And yep, so yep. I think that when used properly and when they're not like cracked or have any issues, they work they seem to work really well. So <laughs> yeah, That's definitely. Yeah. I think it's going to be once they get their like, um, cause they're kind of running the startup model right now with batches. I think once like they can do faster production. Cause I think we waited like 18 weeks or something. Crazy. Faster production, And they'll figure out the weak points in their yeah. design too, and fix them. I mean, yeah. with any you know, version one product, you're going to have those little tweaks that, that you need to make. Yeah. Totally. And also for people who've never, you know, used these or heard of them, like what is, if you guys could describe like the compost bin and kind of how you prepare that for going to the bathroom with a composting toilet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really simple. So we do cocoa core or peat moss. Um, you buy it in like, I wish we were in the van cause we could show you, but like a really compact brick, I'm sure people have seen it. Um, and Basically, we hydrate it in a little bag. Um, And then the way we do it is we'll start with the fresh bin. So we we put enough in such that like the bottom inch of the agitator arms are covered. Um, And then after every go, we add probably a cup or two more. Um, Colby adds a cup. I add like two or three times. (laughs) Which just means we empty it earlier, but you know, the more, the the merrier, I think in that situation, except that you have to empty it more. Um, But then, yeah, once it's, you know, once when you're agitating it, like stuff is like almost falling out, that's when we'll just, you know, either bag it up and toss it, or we prefer since it's composted to like go to the national forest and dig, takes a while to dig a hole big enough for that barrel, but dig a hole you know so the top is six inches down and bury it it's it composts like it looks like dirt honestly totally and then so a tip is you don't put um toilet paper in it right oh no oh no my gosh. we uh we do bag that and throw it away separately so we yeah we keep a thing of ziplocs by our toilet um this is like a very heated debate apparently people have been recently we've seen a lot of polls on instagram do you put your tp in the toilet or not it's like no so some people do that you've heard of into the compost. Oh yeah, apparently Nature's Head does recommend putting your TP in there. Oh, wow, that's really interesting because I've never heard you're like supposed to. I've always done what you guys have done and not put yeah. it in there. But wow, that's interesting. <laughs> I mean, I would think that it would compost just fine. It would just get stuck in the agitator, and you don't want to be like yeah, no. having to like pick that out of the <laughs> agitator. <laughs> totally that sounds Not gross good. so so the cutty seems very lightweight and I'm just saying all this so our the audience can understand and so you lift it up and you like it's light enough to just put it in a bag right the bucket yeah mm-hmm. yeah so you don't even need to pick the whole toilet um it's like a little black bin in there with a handle that folds behind out of the way so you don't get stuff on it um you just pick it up walk actually sometimes we do take the whole toilet outside and and then pull it out just in case there's a little spill um but it's less than 
10 pounds or five or I'm a bad estimate. I mean, in four months that we've been in Rover, we've probably emptied it twice. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we're new to it. It's a new toilet yeah. and we haven't had it for years. So we're still, we've had it for four months, but we're still in the testing phase. Yeah. It's working well so far, but it's not like we can speak to, you know, years and years of emptying it. Yeah. <laughs> totally. But two times in four months is pretty good. That's amazing. Yeah. And do, yeah. You guys, do you guys use other bathrooms as well besides that one? We each probably only, you know, go number two in it. Twice a month. Twice a month. Yeah. yeah that's what I was going to say. Cool. So, so it's pretty kind of infrequent. Like, yeah. So it's kind of like a backup system to going in a public bathroom if there is one. Yeah. It's backup for number two. We almost exclusively yeah. use it for number one. Like I would say. And for that, I mean, we empty the pee jug every two, one to two days. Yeah. Yeah, because that fills up really quickly. Yeah. Because you can plan your solids. I mean, we're at the ski hill almost every day. Yeah. You know, and they got bathrooms, grocery stores, REIs. And we both um, like going outside in the summer. Like, we'd rather go find like a nice spot up <laughs> with a nice view and dig a hole. It's a nice <laughs> excuse to just like get out of the van sometimes. Too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's funny I totally agree with you I think people who aren't van lifers yeah. would think we're crazy but me and my partner Tom talk about that we're like it has a great view it's very clean there's yeah. no germs it's like oh there's my gosh. Air, fresh air it doesn't stink <laughs> no and it's like an optimal position too I know like you're supposed to yeah. be that <laughs> And that makes me laugh because I was just seeing this ad on Instagram or somewhere for the squatty potty. And I'm like, yep. I do not need that. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm like fully squatting. <laughs> yeah, It just brings your legs up. I yeah, know. we don't need to pay for that. We got no. that for free out in the woods. <laughs> yeah, and we're talking about how it keeps your body kind of fit and in shape because a lot of people like can no longer squat, I've noticed. Like oh. as they age, like mm. the squatting becomes very difficult. Like my Tom has been working on his squat because he became stiff, you know, as he aged, but he's now like oh. in a low squat. So it's actually very good for our physiology too. Yeah. <laughs> So, wow. I never thought of that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. So I'm sure everybody thinks we're crazy that isn't in van life, but this is how it is. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to talk about a little bit of that too, the, the digging the whole principles. If you guys had any advice to share with the, uh, you mentioned the six inches, just if you had any advice about that for people who are trying that for the first time. Oh yeah. Do you want to speak to Ellen? Uh, I mean, sometimes you'll go to campsites and and you walk in the woods and, and oh. you just see like everybody's holes and toilet sure paper coming up. And it's, it's really disappointing to see. So my philosophy is always go like twice as far as the <laughs> furthest like hole that you see. I mean, I will literally walk for like three minutes will. back in the woods. Like we could be on a plane and you could like hardly see me when I go. So I always err on the side of go further from the campsite rather than dig your hole, you know, two inches deeper or, you know, bicker about like six inches or four inches or eight inches. Yeah. Um, just like go further as like step number one. Away from water too, campsite and water. Yeah. 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 And then a lot of times it's not like I'm digging in a garden where it's really dense soil. I mean, it's like, you know, all the detritus in on the forest floor. So it just kind of comes up, you know, I'll peel yeah. back like a big, uh, you know, like, you know, two square foot area of moss. Great idea. Like peel it back. And then like my hole below that's pretty shallow. It's just a little plastic spade. Yeah. You know, deposit a little bit of dirt. And then that whole like flap yeah. of, of like moss just on top of it. We're big moss fans. Like that's one of the best ways we think to make sure no one gets there. And the only thing I would say should be visible is like, sometimes you could put like a warning stick <laughs> i think like a, there's a hole here move elsewhere like but that you should never have tp or you shouldn't put your tp we also anyway. bag our tp when yeah. we are going you know in the woods in the national forest yeah we'll take that out with us so you know because <laughs> animals will dig that up and then like it's easy to see yeah they drag it around mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that's very true. But typically it's pretty easy, like you were saying, in the summer when it's not snowing to just find somewhere to do that. Yeah. 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 And just like think about what you don't want to see when you're camping and don't do that. 
<laughs> totally. I totally agree. Cause I've seen that too. Like that just yeah. people don't even bother even trying to bury it. Sometimes it seems like there's just like toilet paper thrown around. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like it's just oh, and it's like, it's like 15 feet from the campsite too. Mm. It's like, you could like toss a rock from the camp pit and like hit somebody's spot. It's like, yeah. and no, I'm like 200 yards away. <laughs> yeah. And totally. I think if, if people like need a reminder, one of the things that I think about a lot is like dogs get really sick when they eat human like poop. Oh, we just learned this from. Yeah. Uh, so whenever I'm like, I don't know if my hole's deep enough, I'll just think of dogs and dig a little deeper because dogs find stuff like even if it's far. So just think about like the dogs that might be camping there or anything like that. It's not good for them at all. That's a good point. Yeah. One of my van lifer I follow, her dog dug up some poo and apparently yeah. it had um, marijuana in it because the <gasps> person had smoked a lot or eaten, I guess eaten a lot. And the dog oh. got sick, like stoned <gasps> and it was really bad. Yeah. I know. It's like, it like a crazy story, but she, she was like, please dig a deeper hole. <laughs> yeah no everyone dig a deeper hole think yeah. about that story that's what I'm gonna think of now <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah that's it's a good thing to bring up so cool so you guys have the that's such good advice you have that you have the composting toilet but it's just for a few times a month and it works to have in an emergency yeah. so I like that and yeah um is there anything I'm missing about composting toilets I think we covered a lot of it unless something else people need to know <laughs> think so I think the key is like you know separate the two don't put your TP in and um I don't know maybe if, oh I do think like if you're just building a van like that is one of if you know you want a toilet that is one of the things you should get the dimensions of early because they're big and you will have to build something around it like we were lucky enough we actually have the dimensions on our blog of like how we built our shower box to fit our toilet um but you know we had a the dimensions of the toilet were a key decision maker in buying it um just because of how it fit but I think that's all that's a good point to yeah, yeah. measure it out and know which one you want before so, yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's great advice cool yeah. well while we're talking about bathrooms I'm also curious about your shower situation you guys have an interesting um thing going on so tell us yeah. about about that I kind of modeled it after Seven O Savages mm -hmm. uh shower in his uh his van. Um so it's folds up into a bench seat and I mean I built a frame out of uh 10 series 8020 um and then got uh what some 16 gauge stainless steel sheet um and actually welded a solid frame exactly custom to just mm -hmm. slip in uh inside that that frame so the the pan itself is you know fully custom it's 18 inches high um you know 30 inches by 30 by 20 30 by 20 yeah um and the the shower curtain just kind of funnels uh you know grabs up higher wider and just funnels into the shower um because it's a stainless steel pan and i'm not the expert welder um i this was the one project that I couldn't DIY and I had to uh I guess subcontract out. Uh, it's not a sloped drain that we got. So we have a it's a seven eighth inch or no it's a one and a one and a quarter inch drain I think. It's pretty small on a flat bottom. Um so every time you set it up we do have to like squeegee it out and you know soak it up, dry it up um you know before we put it all back away. So that's the one like uh pain point of using it i'd say right now we're on a uh once every third day uh <laughs> use good. and you know we both shower at the same time so we just have to set it up once take it down once mm -hmm. um a little bit of an activity uh but i mean it just i don't know it works we got we got hot water i think to you, it yeah like the the bench the stowaway shower in a bench is really good for airspace like we knew we wanted to be able to host people mm -hmm. so like now when people are over we don't have this floor to ceiling shower that we use once every three days we have this bench that people can sit on every day and then you know every three days we pull out a shower curtain and attach it to the ceiling and it, it does the trick um I think it's perfect for us yeah the priority was maintaining space in yeah. the van you know, keeping that open. I mean, we've had, you know, two friends over and it feels like you got all the space in the world. 
Um, yeah. They walk in and they're like, wow, your fan feels like twice as big as mine. <laughs> even though they're like, you know, about the same size. Yeah. yeah good use of space. And then so for your, what kind of shower head do you use for that? It's just a um, handheld shower. Head. Like it, it stows at the bottom and then it's got an eight, well, we got a longer eight foot shower hose mm-hmm. and we just hold it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the key is it, it turns on and off at the head so while you're showering, when you're in a van, you're saving water. So it's not a continuous shower. It could be, but what we do is, you know, we turn it on, we get wet, we do our hair, you know, turn it on again, like turn it off, on, off, on. Um, and it just saves water. But it's really important to have the control at the head, I think. Because especially in the winter, uh, water fills are hard to find. Yeah. So the two of us are stretching our 32-gallon water tank like 10 days Wow. Um, I mean, we, we, yeah. <laughs> our first week, we, we did two weeks mm-hmm. between fills, which, you know, works out to a gallon per person per day, maybe a gallon and a half. That's crazy. I mm-hmm. mean, that's, you know, dishes probably twice a day, a little bit of drinking water. We get most of our drinking water from uh, the resort, from you know, just filling up our water bottles at yeah. fill stations. Yeah. Um, and showering. So, I mean, I don't know how much water we each use showering. I imagine it's, Gallon two, or two? two to three gallons oh, two, two gallons yeah, know, it's, probably it, more. it's it's not a it's not a 15 minute shower no. um but yeah that no. the the one key for the shower head is to have the button like control at the shower head yeah that's, that's a really i love that idea yeah we take a solar shower outside but still oh. like the same amount of water you guys used like just the tiniest bit for each person yeah. and yeah it's turning it on and off so I guess that's one benefit of house sitting like we're doing now is we can take yeah. very long showers <laughs> oh my gosh every day what is happening I don't want like my body to get used to showering every oh, day such luxury daily shower <laughs> no. oh. so yeah so cool so you guys um you use that about every three days then. And wow, that's a long time to make it last your tank. That's impressive. So yeah, we, one of the best things we did when, um, winter started was we, well, we have two like Nalgene's, but we went to REI and we bought this like three liter bladder that packs down like really small. And we put it in our pocket when we're skiing and every morning and probably evening we will fill up three liters at those you know stations at the resort or the grocery store um and that's like all our cooking and drinking water and i think that has given us like extra days period yeah because we'll make our coffee from that you know when we cook, yeah you know spaghetti or rice noodles we're just using that water yeah um so that's how we extend the life of our tank um in the summer it's, it's oh, okay. easy it's not the chore of like filling the water tank it's finding a spigot in Colorado that's not winterized. Yeah, that totally makes sense. The winter's a different game animal than the summer yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the topic of water is interesting because I just read the average family uses a thousand gallons a month. And <gasps> yeah, it's it's shocking for us van lifers who <laughs> use way less. <laughs> so yeah. I thought that was an interesting fact. But I'm surprised it's even that low because that's only yeah. uh what, 33 gallons a day? for a family, call it a family of three. I mean, even that's like 10 gallons. I mean, for most people, it's a five minute shower. Right. I know. <laughs> so cool. So one more thing I wanted to ask you guys, cause I know you talk about this a lot on your Instagram is your build um, materials, which is very interesting and unique. If you can talk about your um, aluminum um, experience. Mm-hmm. That's you. <laughs> so yeah, we used uh, an aluminum experience aluminum extrusion called 8020 for almost all of our uh structural components in our van um one of the biggest concerns for us was just weight in a van Um, a lot of people don't realize that uh you know when you're talking about a full build um the weight actually adds up really quickly Mm -hmm. um and a lot of vans finish over their gross vehicle weight rating which means you know, their, their tires, their brakes, their engine, their, you know, alternate, all, all their parts on their car wear out faster. Um, aside from it being illegal, <laughs> aside from it being uh, a safety concern, um, you know, if your vehicle's overweight, it can't stop as quickly. Yeah. You know, because your brake pads have ratings to them. Um, the suspension 
has a rating to it. You know, if you hit a bump and you're overweight, like you're just going to be bottoming out your uh, suspension all the time. Um, so aluminum is, you know, lightweight metal. It's uh, rigid, has very great um, tensile strength and shear strength. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't need nearly as much of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um relative to wood so our bed system is like three bars yeah of 80 20 one uh, 15 series so inch and a half thick mm. um and it's not a solid profile it's kind of this like hollow -ish. it's this like x shape with like arrows on all of the all of the uh um ends uh it's a it's an efficient use of of space to maximize like the strength of the profile. Yeah. So like our bed system probably weighs. I have no idea. What, <laughs> we got nothing. I mean, the aluminum probably weighs like 30 to 40 pounds and then the plywood on top of it, another, you know, it's just half inch. Yeah. So 30, 30 pounds. And it's also really square to work with like every module. And I'm pretty sure we, on our, blog we at least have build guides for most you know cabinets galleys beds showers all those things by now but it's just like a really simple way to build square lightweight but like ridiculously strong um vans that'll it's, last forever it's a perfectly homogenous material yeah. so you're never going to get mm -hmm. uh you know, a knot in your wood that'll have a induce a weak point. Mm -hmm. There'll never be an issue of the grain, you know, like, like bowing or curving one way. Uh, and Colby was right. It's in some ways it's more difficult to learn how to use, mm -hmm. but like actually building it, like it turns out perfect. Everything yeah. is perfectly square. It requires, you know, no talent to like tighten things down correctly. And then you have like perfectly square galleys mm -hmm. you know all your your boxes our shoe storage our bed our cabinets um i mean they're perfectly square and it's aluminum so they're never going to like expand, expand and contract or squeak um squeak yeah it's a good one yeah. so like the the build quality that comes out of it is uh i think far and away better than uh better than wood <laughs> uh, there is an aesthetic to it um you know, some people will cover their mm -hmm. uh, eighty twenty or their aluminum extrusion with uh, like plywood because they don't want to see the the metal. Um, we didn't mind it, so we left a lot of it uh, exposed. You'll see in our build. Mm -hmm. um, but that was a, a I'd call it a design choice yeah. uh, on our part. Very That's cool. Something. Yeah, and I know you guys have written a lot, so people can find a lot of um, guides on your Engineers Who Van Life blog, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to learn. I mean, yeah, there are all sorts of, you know, fasteners and connectors for different, you know, angles that you want yeah. things to come in at or... I would say a good starting point is we've recently launched like a beginner's guide where we basically like distill it down to like four to five fasteners that you might use instead of the like 100 that 8020 has available on their website um so that would be a really good place to start and then dig into the individual modules probably yeah Very it's cool. definitely more expensive than wood yeah uh it requires some specialty tools mm -hmm. especially just to cut um yeah. the lengths but if you do a good job planning mm -hmm. uh like literally drafting out your modules so you know every single length that you need you can get um, it all like pre-cut, pre-machined by 8020. So when it arrives, it's basically just like Lincoln logs. Yeah. That's... And like you're putting it all together and it all fits and, you know, kind of loose fit it, make sure it, you know, fits in the van. And then once it's all set in place, like then on every single bolt, put a little bit of blue Loctite in, crank yeah. it down one final time. So it's all locked into place and then you'll be good to go. Yeah. Because if you don't use Loctite, as soon as you start yes. driving right. and all the vibrations from the road, you're going to have bolts just all over your floor and your module is going to fall apart and you're going to oh. be sad. Learn from experience. <laughs> oh so gosh. do use Loctite. <laughs> yes. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing all your tips. Um, if you could just tell people again where to find you on the internet, of course, I'll put all the links below, but the show notes, but just tell us uh, where to find you. Yeah, it's just engineers who van life on uh, Instagram or 
engineersofvanlife.com on the web as our blog. Yeah, that's us. Fantastic. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's super fun talking to you guys. So yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having us. We enjoyed talking about uh, showers and toilets and aluminum. Of course. We love it all. <laughs>